What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I have with me here once again my homeboy AJ. A lot of you guys remember him from one of my live streams that we did talking about um what men really want. Wait, no. no can, can a, a woman, woman handle, handle a man's truth? That's right. Yes. That's, that <laughs> argument is still debatable right now. Yes, some of you guys were fans, some were not. But either way, <laughs> here he is again. And this is my second video in celebration of Black History Month. Yes. So AJ, um, for those of you that missed that live stream, um, I did mention how we've been friends for quite a few years now. Yes. Um, AJ is basically like part of the family. He's been to a bunch of my family cookouts and kids' birthday parties and all that. So yeah, AJ, he's one of the fam. AJ, what has your experience been being around Dominicans? For the most part, just like any other Latin culture that I've been around, being from Florida, been around Cubans, Puerto Ricans, Venezuelans, uh, and then coming up here, El Salvadorians. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a different flavor. Oh yeah, different flavor. <laughs> uh, so yes, I can say that it's it's uh, different in good ways. Good, good, okay. So I want to also get into your podcast. Yeah, we mentioned this on the live stream, but for those of you that missed it, AJ is part of a podcast with, um, there's three of y'all, right? Yes. Three main speakers yes. or whatever. Yes, Ish Talk TV. Mm -hmm. So we, um, you can find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, I go by AJ Turnup there, aka Buff Curry. Uh, so yes, you can uh, check that out. And if you want, we also have merchandise that we sell. We also have Ish Brownies. And that's for 18 and older. If you want to fly right, you just go to www.utcdmv.com. Once again, www.utcdmv.com. And you check that out. And furthermore, if you want to know that, get into that little what can men, women handle a man's truth, go back to her previous uh, video and get get more. Subscribe. Spread the word. Spread yeah. it to her page. She's this was That was a very awesome interview. That was four hours, but... Yeah, piece by piece it's chapters yeah. to that and then yes you can also subscribe to our ish talk page as well mm -hmm. and spread that ish word that's what we do we bring the ish to you real ish talks <laughs> yes and did you say already it is based in the dmv it is based it is currently yeah. in the dmv yes mm -hmm. and uh sometimes we, we can be mobile so that'll be something you can inbox us about but yes definitely check out the merchandise we got hoodies shirts we got uh women wear all sizes because we love everybody so yeah, check that out and good prices too. Mm -hmm. And support your black your black businesses. Yeah. Now, just one thing because I'm remembering, just to clarify, AJ is fully black. Yes. I remember somebody in the live chat was like, "Who's this white boy?" <laughs> <laughs> he is he is black, y'all. He is black American. Both of your parents black American. That's right. As far as you know, your family is all black. Was there? Do you have a white ancestor in there? Anyway? Of course, my last name is English. I ain't telling y'all oh. my last name, but it's English. But it's, every black person's last it's a black American. Well, for the most part, yeah. But looking at my complexion, you can tell down the line somebody was with somebody white, voluntarily or involuntary. That's up to debate. Mm -hmm. But yes, I also have. I think I have Cuban ancestry, Seminole ancestry, because I'm a a Florida uh, native, Tampa Bay, Florida. Okay, that's, I, I was going to ask you about that, like your roots, like where in the U.S. your roots are. and Tampa Bay, Florida. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, go Bucks. We're about to win the whole thing. Just y'all know the Super Bowl. Now, I know for y'all Dominican and Dominicans, football Americano might not be the big thing, but here, that is <laughs> this is the holy grail. So, yes. But, yeah, I'm from Tampa, Florida, uh, East Tampa, uh, College Hill. Uh, Ponce de Leon's housing projects is where I originated from. So, yeah, it's no longer there, but... That's that's my roots. Tampa mm -hmm. Bay, Florida, Hillsborough County. Okay. You were in Florida up to what age? Uh, I was up there, I would say about five. And then I came up here. Uh, but I stayed going back down there uh, throughout the summers, throughout Christmas breaks. You name it. For like eight straight years, mm -hmm. I was back home. Okay. So, yeah. I, I still, despite being up here, I still always learned a lot of things going back home. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. So, I now want to move on, you know, to the rest of the interview. And I do want to give a quick disclaimer. Based on some of the comments that I was getting under the last interview that I did with an African-American. Now, I just want to say, 
obviously okay everybody knows i'm dominican and you know most of my content is more geared towards like latino issues however like i have always said from the beginning of my channel my platform is for everyone my platform is open to everyone and like y'all have heard me say a bunch of times um you know when it after hispanics the group that i have been closest to have always been african-americans so i mean that i i don't have a a problem bringing them onto my platform and discussing issues with them that may not necessarily be directly to my community but just so that you know latinos or dominicans can hear their side as well okay and also i've never claimed to be an expert on these topics okay again i'm just providing a platform for people to speak and um you know so we can hear their side of things as well all right so i just want to put that disclaimer out there so you identify yourself as a uh, dominican woman that dominican american I dominican guess. american okay mm -hmm. that's good yeah all right and okay so where do you uh, put yourself as a black woman? Or that? Are you a Dominican black woman or a black Dominican woman? Uh, mm, I, don't, I don't know. I never really thought of it that way. Like I've said before, I mean, I guess you could say I'm a black Dominican. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm mixed. I'm racially mixed. But phenotypically, I would put myself to the black side. So, so I mean, it doesn't matter. Black Dominican, Dominican black. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> at the end of the day, I've always see myself as a morena, you know, as a negra, so, and again, I know I'm not the darkest out there, but that's always what I've kind of seen myself as, yeah. so, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah but it's funny because mm -hmm. just recently on another platform, there were people that arguing over whether I was black or not, which is funny because I've gotten that a lot since I've been on YouTube, it's always a debate, am I black or am I not black? At this point, I'm like, listen, I'll be whatever you want me to be. I don't care. No, no. <laughs> I don't care anymore. No, no, depending on, <laughs> yeah, I was going to tell you, depending on who you talk to, it's going to, that question I asked you really speaks volumes. And depending on your upbringing, your mindset, that's why you're going to get those kind of comments. But that's a whole nother topic <laughs> we'll get into for another time. Mm, black yeah. people out there don't know what I'm talking about. Black American people know what I'm talking about. Mm. Well, I mean, I don't know. I've always kind of said we're... Uh, how I grew up identifying, I mean, okay. you know, on paper, I always put my race as black, but I also checked the Hispanic ethnicity box. So mm. I always just check both. Okay. But it is what it is. All right. So anywho, so AJ, I first want to ask you, since it is Black History Month, yes. who do you consider to be three of the most influential black icons in American history and why? You mean throughout American history or of, of today? Throughout, if there's one that's from the present day, that's fine too. Okay, I mean, of course, uh, you have Brother Malcolm, Malcolm X, a.k.a. Malcolm Little, who was born in Nebraska, uh, 1925, I think. Uh, he went by Detroit Red and all that stuff. But uh, then you have Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. uh, of course. These are all names that a lot of you are going to know about, of course. Like I said, Brother Malcolm, Malcolm X, Malcolm Little, a.k.a. Uh, Martin Luther King. Then uh, you could say... For one more, I would go with, I'm just trying, there's so many. Mm -hmm. You you could say W.E. Du Bois. You could say uh, James Baldwin, Huey P. Newton, mm -hmm. uh, Bobby Bobby uh, Bobby Seale, Eldridge, Cle Eldridge Cleaver, Angela Davis. It's, it's too many. It's too many. Mm -hmm. And as you all see, I'm talking about from political, social, and standpoints too you have marcus garvey he, he he's another one so it's so many but yes i would say for my personal three i would go with malcolm wait uh, garvey, wasn't he jamaican marcus, marcus garvey, garvey uh, yeah but he um mm. i like i like the um some of the viewpoints that he had mm, okay yeah and i for me personally i would i liked uh brother malcolm uh i like martin as well and i liked uh huey huey p no mm -hmm. no those three for me Okay. were really good and they were all essential for different reasons and uh different times mm, gotcha okay all right so now i just want to get into some questions regarding your thoughts on the current states of the black community um the black american community specifically so the first one is what do you think about the current state of the culture um be it entertainment music do you feel like Say in the music industry, do you feel like it's lost value? Do you feel like, or it's, it's popping? Like, what are your thoughts on it? Like, where do you see the, or where do you see the future of music going? Okay, well, 
honestly, we are in a state of a cultural chaotic mix mixture without a clear direction. And mm. what I mean by that, it's literally like there's a bus full of black people on there with different ideas, different intentions, different views, and we're we're driving the bus. We got a full tank, but we are driving full speed, but everyone is arguing for which direction to go. Mm. And we're in the middle, we're in the long middle of the road, just driving full mm -hmm. speed without clear direction. Mm. So yes, it's, we're, we're a little chaotic right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you feel about like all the, yeah. the current and like upcoming rappers and stuff? I mean, that's and, like their message. It's, it goes both ways. It's, it's, I, I do, I am open to change and different ideas and different, uh, pers you know, per perception, perspectives of, of different, co of younger generations. But at the same time, it, it's, it's good and bad. Pros is, like I said, open to new ideas, open to new, uh, you know, views on how things are in the current generation. But the issue that I have is it's more quantity over quality. Mm. I don't like that there's certain, but this goes back even in the birth of hip hop where, yeah, you know, you had back in the day, it was more not about how you sold records. It was about how your impact was to the people, to the mm. culture, to black people. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's it's more about being marketed and if you can be a, become a brand. Mm. And by any means, and it's unfortunate. It's, you know, whatever it takes to get to the top, such as 20 some years ago in the 90s, your craft was how we identified you. Not to say that it's not like that now. You still have your Kendrick Lamars and your J. Coles. However, if you're not talking about typical negative things such as uh you know using sex uh, as a weapon or murder or just popping pills if you're not marketable in that way they're not going to pay as much attention you can still make it as i said you have j cole and kendrick's out there but for the most part if you're not if you're more on the positive tip in black american entertainment you're gonna it's gonna be a, a longer road mm, you have yeah, to be you have that. to be extra talented and yeah. separate yourself. Uh, you can't be too conscious or woke. Otherwise, people are going to be bored. So, unfortunately, mm -hmm. that's why we are in the situation we are when it comes to messages to the youth. It's mixed because they don't know whether to to be upstanding citizens or just be renegade hoodlums. Mm. So, it's... Uh, it's and that's just more... That's entertainment. That's music. Mm -hmm. That's sports. All yeah. that plays a big part, and right now we're just a collective mess. Yeah. Do you feel like there's any direct correlation between the the music being produced and some of the way in which people within the community are acting and dealing with each other? Oh, absolutely. Because the thing is, a lot of the, you know, the way the industry is set up, it's unfair to people of color in America because they're not run by us. They're run by unfortunately, mostly white people, and they're giving their perception of what we are and what they want to mm. sell. So they're not, like I said, you know, they're manufacturing who they want to, to lead the people. I won't give certain names, but we know who out there who is big and that's, and that's running things. For nine times out of ten, for black people in America, I ask you that question. Who out there is a big star that you know, okay, they're not sending a positive message to the black community, but they're posted everywhere. They're being shown. So, yes, that has a big impact on, on like I said, the next generation because they're going to look up to those, especially for the ones without guidance. I'm not going to put that solely on those entertainers because a lot of them are just doing their job. But when you have a platform where you know that you can influence someone the right way or the wrong way, it is your responsibility to understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's your full responsibility, but you do have a responsibility because mm -hmm. people who are in that position, yeah, you're you're basically making money not just off your experience, but off the struggles of other of your people. So mm -hmm. yes, the industry manufactures certain things uh, for for certain artists to mislead a group of black people, and that's been going on for years. We know this. Mm -hmm. It's just until we control the industry completely, it's gonna be that way mm -hmm. you're you're over sexualized yeah. uh a female artist or you're over gang 
minded uh, rapper or drug induced coma rapper is going to be leading the new wave of people. Your mm -hmm. conscious rappers or your ones that trying to spit positive energy, they're going to do their best and they'll get a few of them. But it's not like, unfortunately, if we don't hurry up and take control, it's not it's just going to be a forever s cycle of, of bullshit. Mm. That's all it is. Just a uh, long, miserable, frustrating cycle of bullshit that we are trying to break. It's going to take time, though. It's going to mm. take some time. Do you feel like the same thing translates to the film industry? Or do you think maybe black people have a little more of a say in that? No, because no. black people don't. They still, you have a few directors that are trying to do it. You have your Spike Lee's. You had mm -hmm. John Singleton. Yes, you have, like you, have Brad, you have your uh, Coopers out there. But, once again, for the most part, <laughs> the industry is still run by people who are not of color. They're, they're, you know, it's mostly white people. And then you have old generational wealth of white people that control everything. Like, there's not, like, movies are typically made by a group of people that sit around and decide whether this movie is going to be made or not. I can guarantee you, for the most part, 95% of them are not black. Mm -hmm. So, once again, you have these white people that have been around a few black people and think that they know the culture and they go and say, hey, let's make this movie about this. And sometimes, and for the, most of the time, they're wrong. Uh, but other times, they think they're right. But black culture is so is so changeable so fast. So they'll have something right, but they're like ten years late. It's like okay, mm -hmm. yeah, like like if they tried to, I guarantee you right now, if someone white tried to make a movie about the DMV, they would probably like they'll probably still talk about Nike boots. Now, for all y'all out there in Dominican. Nike boots used to be a big thing in the DMV area. That shit was just crazy. But we're talking about oh, like oh four, oh five, oh six, oh seven, that era. I can see somebody white trying to uh, make a movie about the current DMV, thinking that that's still popping, and it's not. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by representation. Mm -hmm. You have white people that will go into these industries and talk about thinking that they know what our culture is and what we are and what's trending right now, and they don't. Mm -hmm. And when they do even try to get it right, they 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 put it on the screen so poorly, and it's like, uh, like okay, you had a good point right here, but you just it went right over their head. So yeah, it black movies, all that stuff because, and then there's a contradiction because you have Italian movies like you have your Goodfellas, Casino, then you have your other gangster Europe European movies like that deal with Irish people like The Departed. All those are Academy acclaimed movies. And they are those actors are they were really act they were doing their thing, but when you have black movies that are talking about violence, it all of a sudden we're glorifying it. Like your Minister Society, Boys in the Hood, South mm -hmm. Central, uh, Paid in Full. These are all classic movies, but they they shouldn't be just considered classic hood movies. They those actors were being good. They were acting, but according to mostly white America, those actors weren't acting. They were just being themselves. Mm -hmm. That's how we are portrayed in it. Like, eh, you know, because those movies should have won awards as well. Like, Boys in the Hood won one award, but Men's Society, that's arguably the greatest, like, to me, personally, one of, like, the greatest, like, movie that talked about inner city crimes going on in the black community and how, for the most part, the reality of it, if you live that life, it's going to be, neg it's going to end in a negative way. Death, jail, or just destruction. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the movies play a, a pivotal role, too, just like TV shows. They play a pivotal role. Like, we need to have more... Like, back in the 80s, we had uh, shows that were uplifting black people. Like, A Different World, The Cosby's. Yeah. We had those shows. Mm -hmm. Now, they got... Honestly, after Flavor of Love came out in the early 2000s, that's when I knew, oh, shit, they're pushing this agenda where they want to have black people look stupid. Make the buffooneries. Mm -hmm. Like, you love and hip-hop. I can't watch that oh, shit. I don't watch that. reality stuff <laughs> where I see... Uh, black women, black men behave that way. Now I know a lot of uh, there are a lot of us out there that do behave that way, but that shit's behind the scene. I don't want to see that on TV. I don't. That is that's just uh that's just it's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that shit is fake anyway. But still, yeah, don't do that. Like I, yeah. I can't. I I don't because people gonna there. watch it and be like, see, that's how they. That's act. how they. Act. And then unfortunately, if someone acts out of character in reality, then they say, well, that's how they. Well, she acts like that on the show, so. So yeah, I, I do not we do not need that type of representation. We need to go back to where blacks 
are they show how we really are. We are educated geniuses that we enrich the existence of the world. And yeah, there are negative aspects in our community that we will fix, but that's everybody. So yeah, the entertainment and music and uh, sports, we, we got a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully uh, we need to be up to the test. Now, hopefully we need to, to make changes. Mm -hmm. So that's just, that's my point of view on, on that aspect of, of black America. Okay. It's a, it's, like I said, it's just a mix. It's a yeah. chaotic, it's chaotic right now. Gotcha. Okay. So I want to now move on to my next question, which is how you feel about Black Lives Matter. Um, be it the, the movement or the actual organization. I did notice that um, on the Ish Talk TV Instagram page, y'all have made a few posts about it. So that's why I thought to ask, <laughs> what, what are y'all's thoughts on? It seems like your, your posts are mainly about the actual organization. Yeah. So what's your thoughts on it? Uh, like most things in life, everything, typically a lot of things start out with great intentions can get perverted by people with alternate agendas. Mm -hmm. And that's typically what I think of the Black Lives Matter movement. I think mm -hmm. in, in the beginning, it did start out where we, it was meant to to help black people and show the world like, hey, you know, we are unjustly being slaughtered out here through racial, you know, prejudice against us just because of our, our culture and our skin color. That's not acceptable. And the world is seeing it, but in America sees it and nothing is happening. No, no action is being taken or we are, we are being slowly silenced. So yeah, Black Lives Matter started that way, but then you have other people in there, other people with, like I said, with other agendas and various groups coming in there and messing it up. Like mm -hmm. in a way it's like they tainted it. Yeah. You know, like it's like when you have a, a cup full of water and then someone drop some dirty oil in there. Just that one drop can contaminate that water and you can't drink it anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's how Black Lives Matter is at this point. It needs to be, in a way, it just needs to be, not even dilute, it just, we need to reconstruct it mm. and have specific demands of what we need to do. And certain people, I, I hate to say it, you might not be able to join that, join this process because this is something that we need to do for ourselves and we cannot have any any further contamination. So mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter starts out, I think it started out very well with the mm -hmm. intentions of helping us. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's so much stuff that has been infiltrated and, and, and uh, like inadvertently and uh, advertently. They have tried, you know, I, I truly think that we were infiltrated by people to do that, to mess us up, to, yeah. you know, divide us. Because that's mm -hmm. what happened. Mm -hmm. So yeah, to but, really mess up like the, the image of it too, yeah. like that one black girl that was twerking. Yeah, that in was front of the yeah, Washington and that's Monument. what and that's what we posted on our show, and mm -hmm. we were talking about that. That was dumb as hell. Yeah. What what does and then I think she was talking about her body being over sexual. I'm like, like, but that was the wrong platform to do that. Right. What the hell are you twerking right. for? That that was just something completely. You didn't think that through. That's another thing about the, the movement. If you're gonna take that kind of action. Think before you act. That's a very important thing that a lot of people in life don't do. Think before you act. So make sure this is the right thing to present. Okay, yeah. Shaking my ass in front of Washington in the Capitol is not the, the not how we want to express that black people are we matter. We want to like yeah. I said, we want to be educated and have dignity and show that we're not stupid. Because mm -hmm. I guarantee you if, when a white person saw that shit, they was laughing. They was like, look at that. Mm -hmm. You know. They, she what she thought she probably thought that she wasn't feeding to the stereotype, but she actually, she was. actually was. You actually were, and you yeah. really just made it worse. You amplified it more. Now these people, who these white people, especially in the South, are going to really go, "Yep, the niggers are stupid. Look mm -hmm. at them dancing like monkeys, dancing like animals." See, we we told you. So, yeah, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we are at an unfair advantage of representation. Mm -hmm. One person. Can mess our whole image up. It's not yeah, fair at all. That's how it goes. It's not fair at all. So yes, when it comes to the Black Lives Matter movement, it's it had it has. I still think it has potential, but like I said, we got to sift all the bullshit out of it. Mm -hmm. So that's just how I feel about that. Yeah. Okay. That's just me. Okay. 
So um, I now want to get a little bit into your thoughts as far as where Black people are politically. Now, with this past election, I did notice some new things kind of going on. Mm -hmm. Now, while the overall, well, the majority of Black people, I think, still voted Democrat or whatever, and were like riding for Biden, I did notice like a low sector that was basically like divesting, you could call it, from the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. And I also noticed that there did seem to be an increase of uh, Black people that voted for Trump. So... Well, starting with that, what what were your thoughts on on that? Like, um, as far as I guess black people waking up to the fact that you know the Democratic Party hasn't really done much for us, and you know y'all have been so loyal to that party as well as black people voting for Trump. Like, what do you think about all that? I mean, I'm not surprised. In a nutshell, black Americans are just frustrated and we're tired because. Everything that both parties said that they would do for black people, Democrats and Republicans, that, that hasn't happened or they're dragging ass to do it. Mm -hmm. So this is why we, we just distrust political. We just distrust the the American, the United States and the government in general because of we of the history that has happened to us. Every time black people come up with a good idea, they'll use it, but it doesn't truly benefit us, just like the civil rights movement. I tell people all the time, the civil rights wasn't just for black people. That was for everybody to have equal rights. That that meant for Latin people, Asian people, handicapped people. That was meant for everybody. And it took off, but still black people got the short end of the stick to that. Because mm -hmm. I love how certain uneducated people try to say, well, the civil rights were for black people. No, no, no. It's the civil rights, not the black civil rights. Mm -hmm. Black people, yes, we started that movement, but... Once again, the civil rights, that's the beauty of black people in America. We, st we, as selfish as people think we are, we can be selfish within our own community, but that's a whole other topic. But we are very giving. We are more accepting. So we don't want people, because we know how it feels to be treated. So we don't want to do that. We don't want other people to experience this and suffer the same uh, agony that we have ever since we were unjustly kidnapped and brought here. Our ancestors were kidnapped and brought here. So that's why they have this thing against Democrats, because in a way, a lot of people don't know their history uh, back in the day. And especially in the early 1900s, those parties were flipped. Democrats were more for white people back in the day, like President mm -hmm. Woodrow Wilson in those times during yeah. the during First World War One. They were more for white people. Uh, Democrats honestly didn't really start looking up for black people until John F. Kennedy. Mm. And that was in the that was in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. So that's when that whole thing got flipped. That's when Republicans started being more for, uh, you know, like to the conservative side. But that's why black people, black people who know the history of that shit, that's why we don't trust it. We're like, we don't trust y'all. Y'all have flip flopped on us so many times. Mm. It's like, you know, once again, if you go back to your history, Lincoln was the party of the Republicans. And, it, you know, that was the party that freed the slaves, but they didn't, we still weren't getting any love and respect. Mm -hmm. Anytime something was meant to protect black people, it failed miserably because you can change the law. You can't. But if you don't change, you can't change people's hearts. Re yeah. Reconstruction mm -hmm. in America in the 1870s was a fail, uh, you know, and they think by putting they thought by putting certain black people in positions. Yeah, you could do that. But what the hell is, is it going to make a difference if they get killed or if they get destroyed? So. That's why we don't trust it. And for the people who voted for Trump, especially black people, I know why they did it. I don't agree with it, but I get with it where they're coming from. They're like, well, damn, you know, you know, look at what the Democrats have done to us over the years, especially in the 90s with the three strike laws, uh, you know, that our current president was a part of. But he's trying to make amends. Uh, so so he says. So we are just like tired of being bamboozled. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of black people trust into that to the democrats because they're like well damn at least they are look like they're more for us i mean in a way you could say that because they just passed the the i think a bill the stimulus um and that i think in the senate and it was 50 to 49 no republicans were for that so that shows you that yeah republicans really don't give a fuck about black people damn. yeah that's that's bad that's really bad and that's thank goodness that the democrats controlled the house and the senate otherwise that shit wouldn't have got passed and people mm -hmm. out there who need this money 
because of this pandemic we are in, yeah. are not getting help. So, yes, that is basically why black people are just frustrated because it's all these broken promises that we were, you know, said that they were going to do for us. And it hasn't truly been fully affected. Now, effective. You have certain aspects that, you know, like they'll use affirmative action, which is OK, you know, but once again, it still is not enough. Black people in America are tired. We still have not received, you know, what is owed to us. And it's not an entitlement because we built this shit. We built this nation. I, I mean, literally and metaphorically, we built this shit. So this is our shit. But once again, I don't want to get on my super black militant rant, but that's in a nutshell is why black people really have issues with political parties because we're like, either way, we're going to be screwed. Mm. We have to survive. That's why a lot, you got a lot of black Americans out there say, who gives a shit with, with president in office? Because either way, we're not benefiting from it. So we need to just continue to do our thing and survive. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, black people in America have been raised on a mindset of survival rather than mm -hmm. living. And it's and it's sad. And yeah. So that's, that's in a nutshell. We're just tired. We're tired of the yeah. bullshit. We're just tired of broken promises uh the government is that boyfriend that treats you like shit and he says he's gonna treat you right and he, over and over he do you dirty and you're like mm -hmm. damn i'm tired and then when you finally do so decide to leave other people say that's a good man what you mean he fine he does all this mm -hmm. i know he do and you be sitting back but you don't know the bullshit i'm dealing with yeah. that's how black people talk to other people outside of the nation when they say well the government's doing this we're like you don't know what i've been through you ain't been in the house you ain't been living there with him. I have. I have to deal with this shit. Mm -hmm. That's that's us in a nutshell. We tired yeah. of we tired of that that cheating ass bastard. Mm. We tired of it. Yeah. And yeah, we tired of it. Yeah. So do you do you think Biden will do anything for the Black America? Actually, somebody sent me a video earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, it was talking about how Biden committed commit. It said. Biden commits four billion dollars for immigration issues, but zero dollars for the Black Americans who voted him in. Yeah. So, do you think y'all can expect anything to change? Honestly, I don't know. I really don't because I hope I hope the president can. I hope he does. I hope uh, the president, the vice president. I hope everyone in in this political office will say, "Hey, you know what? Black people in America have really." been getting the short end of the stick of things let's really put a, a big effort into it like four billion is cool i mean like yeah like you said four billion to the immigrants but damn what about the people that are here already i'm gonna need y'all to put some a, a lot more i need i need trillions out here really realistically mm -hmm. so yeah you know i really hope so i'm not gonna bad mouth uh the president because you know he has an uphill battle you know that's just me for me personally i just want the best I want whoever's in charge of the nation to do what's right, mm -hmm. you know, and I know a lot of people will disagree and say, well, you know, I do want black people taken care of. Of course, I want everybody else. But, you know, it seems like for the most part, other people are taken care of better than us in America. So we feel that way. Yeah, it's understandable. So that's just that's just how it is. And and for you people out there who disagree. I can give you facts or you can just research this. This is really easy to do research. Research the benefits that black people so-called have that foreigners haven't gotten. It's it's all there. It's all there. Mm. So, all right, now going on to the next question, I want to ask, how do you feel that black Americans are faring economically? Do you feel like the um, black American community is progressing as far as where they fall on the economic ladder. Um, do you see a reduction in the number of, say, Black people in poverty and an increase um, for those in the middle to upper, you know, higher classes? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll start and say economically, we will never truly prosper until we attain more economic wealth, ownership of corporations, and in mm -hmm. politics, medicine. Uh, that's what it's going to take. I mean, you have a lot more rich black people because of entertainment industries and mm -hmm. uh, music and sports. But rich and wealthy are two different things. Yeah. Rich can be easily gone. It happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Wealth, I really don't know that many wealthy black families. 
that is generational and mm. not just financially but mentally knowledge because knowledge is wealth as well a lot right. of black people we don't understand that we think by having like a hundred million that's wealth no because that can be squandered as well you have to know the knowledge of making money mm -hmm. and how to keep it going yeah that is what we we need and right now we don't have that yet so we have a lot more rich black people and shout out to that shout out to rich black people but you really want to help Share that knowledge on how to do it, how to do it, and do it the right way. Give us that. That I, I want that wealth, that knowledge up here. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not, I don't ever want to ask people for handouts. I look at it like I just ask for an opportunity. Believe in me. Help me make this money, make it. But that that's all we need. Um, so we, we need more of that. We mm -hmm. really do. But unfortunately... This is where the frustration with black Americans are going to come in because we have tried that in the past. Because I've heard racists say, well, why don't you just do it? Oh, we have tried plenty of times, but we get killed, we get stopped, uh, or, or get sabotaged. You don't believe me? There are over probably like 30, crime, no, more, hundreds of black crimes that have happened in America when we try to prosper economically. I'll give you one, Tulsa. I was just thinking about Tulsa that. happened in that's like the prime example. Yeah, that's one. That's the big one of the biggest ones when mobs of white uh, white residents uh, deputized and giving weapons by city officials attacked black residents and businesses of the Greenwood District in Tulsa, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and killed all those black people. Now they said that it was I think thirty nine dead, twenty six black, and thirteen whites. But uh, the commission gave several estimates ranging from seventy five to three hundred. Yeah, wow. there's a lot more, a lot more than that. Rosewood in Florida happened mm -hmm. because a white woman claimed that she was raped by a black man. And that was a prospering, thriving black business town. And they burnt that to the ground and they killed black people. Mm -hmm. And then, if you guys don't believe me, not just economically, even we can't even have, we can't even religiously be in peace. Look at uh, the Birmingham, Alabama bombings in 1963 where those three uh, black girls were, were killed. Let's go to the present. Not too long ago, in Charleston, South Carolina, in 2015, a white man, a white boy, walks into the church and met and kills black people. And and he was left alive to tell. He's still alive to this day. They protected him. So let that sink in. Our oppressors do a crime, and they and they can be alive to tell the story, or they they get a fair trial. Black people are shot on sight, and then. We get posted pictures of our social media of us having middle finger up signs us that we were just when we were in that moment and then we're, we're, we're hoodlums. Mm. So, yeah, economically, it, all that plays a big part because with economics, you can control the media, you can control the perception, you can control, you know, that's what we we need to try to do. But that's hard. We don't mm -hmm. own a lot of things in America. Yeah. Like when it comes to sports, there are no black owners in football. Hell, they don't even think there's any black owners in basketball. Really? There's no black owners in football? Absolutely not. No, there are no Why black. Why did I think somebody bought a team? No, that, yeah, and he was Arabic. That's a, that's a, yeah, he, that's an Arabic individual. Jay-Z don't for the, own no teams? No, he has shares. There's a difference. Oh. There's a difference. Having shares and owning shit is two different things. Okay. No, um, you have one uh, Arabic dude... Um, uh, he's the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. The rest of them are seventy plus old white men. Or you, you got your your da your Daniel Snyder for the Washington team. Uh, he, but he's a white man. But most of these are white men, and a lot of them are older. So they come from a time where black people, but even by the laws, were considered under beneath them. So they're gonna treat it like that. They won't tell you that in the media, but their behavior is like that. And ain't that many black coaches in the NFL. There's a Rooney rule where you're supposed to to have it. And there was a lot of great black coaches this year that didn't get an opportunity. Uh, there's one coach. I know you don't know these names, but black people out there will know. There's a guy who played he in the Super Bowl. He's he's an offensive coordinator for the Chiefs. Eric Bieniemy, hell of a, a offensive coordinator for this team. Really, really good. Hasn't gotten any uh, opportunities yet. Then on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers side, there's a there's a four black uh, coaches. You have Todd Bowles, defensive coordinator, Byron Leftwich, the offensive coordinator. I forgot the other two, but one is for special teams. Uh, and then you have women who are in football who are uh, that they have hired for coaching. But these mm -hmm. black men, none of them are offered positions. So this is why it's unfair. You know, that's why I say economics plays a, 
a big, big role because that's what America runs off, mm -hmm. economics. So you can you control that. You can control the status of your people. Mm. That's, you know, and that's something that we don't have control over. Now, people think it's easy. No, it's not. I just gave you examples of why. Mm -hmm. I, I give you more examples. Hell, you know, we had the Tuskegee thing where they gave us syphilis. You know, the, it's a lot of things that hinder black people from making it. And for the ones that do make it, God bless you. But half of those, you made it, uh, half of them made it out of spite. And then the other half made it by betraying their own people to get to where they are. Now, that's a whole nother topic. I won't go into that. But yes, economics is very important. We really need, need that. We mm -hmm. really do. And back to Tulsa, just we were black Wall Street. So we had the shit on lock. We know things. We are smart. But they didn't like that. They considered that a threat. So they shut it down. Anytime when black people can get a grasp on economic power, they shut it down. They really do. And, I'm and you think that still applies for the most part today? Absolutely. Absolutely. The white society tries to make the outside world of the United States, uh, the outside of the United States think that because you're Jay-Z's and your your Master P's and your LeBron James and your Jordans that, OK, OK, see, black people got it really good here, guys. They're doing it. And that's not true at all, because they only attain a small part of the wealth that white people got. I can give you names. Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates. Warren Buffett, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, hell, I, the list can go on uh, when it comes to white wealth. All those people, hell, Bill Gates is richer than every black black superstar combined. That means Jay Z, Jay Z, uh, uh, Puff Daddy, Dr. Dre, all their money combined doesn't put a dent in Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos' accounts. Mm -hmm. That's flea money to them. They, Jeff Bezos is worth over a hundred billion dollars. That you think, and I think um, Puff Daddy is like worth like eight hundred million or something, and Jay Z is worth I think almost a billion, and Dr. Dre, just those three. So let's just say, respectively, they could be equally all eight hundred million. They, like I said, that's just eight hundred million. I just told you, Bill Gates has like ninety billion. Jeff Bezos a hundred. Mark Zuckerberg has like forty something billion. All of the you, you you get what I'm saying. You see how the the major gap is between white wealth and black wealth. Mm -hmm. Look at that, eight hundred million. Now that is a lifetime of money for someone like me and you. But Shoot. for those those type of people, eight hundred million. If they if they saw that right now and they saw that's how much they only made, they probably just lose their minds and go, "What the hell is this? What is this? Get this lunch money out of my face." They probably like, I don't get out of bed for anything less than a billion. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. We economically are still far behind. I mean, you like I said, there's, yeah, there's probably a hundred rich black people, maybe a couple more, but you got a, you, you got like really hundreds of white wealthy families. Look at where we live. You, you know what neighborhoods you're in in Northern Virginia when you drive to it. When you go to Great Falls, when you go to, uh, you know, McLean, mm -hmm. Tyson's Corner, mm -hmm. you know, certain parts of Arlington, North Arlington, like your Roslyn areas, uh, certain areas in Falls Church, Annandale. Yeah. You know where you are at and you know the people of color yeah. when you enter that neighborhood. That is America in a nutshell. Unfortunately, when you go to a certain place in America, you know where you are and it ain't uh, wealthy people of all mixtures No, for the most part you know okay I'm in a white neighborhood I'm in a yeah, black yeah. neighborhood I'm in a Spanish yeah. neighborhood African you know where you going in America and based based off by where you put what you put in your GPS you know where you're going so that's the economics that's economics for us in a nutshell okay gotcha all right, so kind of uh, switching gears a little bit, um, I wanted to ask your perspective on this apparent gender war. Um, you know, I wanted to ask, you know, you being a, a black man mm -hmm. and how you feel about all this, this beef that goes on on social media between black men and black women and black women saying that y'all don't want them and that you prefer women of other groups or races and that y'all don't protect them. How do you feel about that? Uh, well, about the wanting part, that's a that's a, a 
two to three hour segment, so I'm going to do my best to condense that. But before I even get to that about protecting black women, um, I don't want to hear that um, in 2021 until I hear uh, why, um, where's that same energy for Chad Wheeler? You know who Chad Wheeler is? Mm -hmm. Now, for you out there who do not know who Chad Wheeler is, he is he was a former offensive tackle for the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, now, put this in perspective, y'all, in your mind. He's 6'7", 300-something pounds. Uh, he brutally beat up his girlfriend, who's a black woman, who was 5'9", and like 100-something pounds. He beat her up all because she didn't bow down to him. Let that sink in, you guys. He beat her up until um, because she didn't bow down. He almost killed her. And when she woke up and came to, he said, oh, you're still alive? She had to run into the bathroom and call 911 for help. Now, uh, the white, of course, the white media did not bring this out into uh, to, uh, the social media. It took other people to bring it out. And, you know, that was basically attempted murder. And they, they're they using his mental health as an excuse because he's bipolar. Now, he's clinically bipolar. But mind you, he knows that and so does she, the girlfriend. They know this situation. But where's the accountability on his part? If he knew that he needed to take his pills, then that's on him. But we're not even going to get into that situation. What I'm talking about is for the black feminists out there, where's that uproar? I didn't hear shit about that uproar about protecting black women from him. Let it have been a black man. We'd have been all over that. You know how I know? Because we have Ray Rice. You have your Jameis Winstons. You have Michael Vick. Uh, James Hardy. Hardy. Not James Hardy. Uh, yeah, Hardy. He's played for the Cowboys. So all these black men, when they do something or they are accused, you're Tory Lanes. It's That's when the protect your black women shit comes in. And that kills me because black men are never given the benefit of the doubt. But Chad Wheeler just beat up this this sister, you know, and many blessings to her and, and her family and people who are going through this. But I didn't hear these black feminists come out and uproar and outrage. Where is this outrage? Where is the same energy? Where is that? I heard black men do it. I heard black men come to her defense. I heard Shannon Sharp come to her defense. And he's an analyst, a sports analyst uh, on Undisputed on Fox. I heard Des Bryant tweet. Saying he gonna whoop that dude's ass on sight, so I've heard mostly black men de defend this woman. I have yet to hear a black a black black feminist protecting saying we gotta protect our sister from this. This was outright. Now I can hear the bullshit coming. Oh oh, we had to assess this situation, but y'all didn't have uh, you know, y'all didn't waste no time when Ray Rice did what he did, and when he admitted that he had mental problems. When black when a black man says he's had mental issues, we we throw that shit out the door. Oh no, you didn't. We don't give him the benefit of the doubt. So that's why I have an issue when it comes to protect. When they say protect the black woman, of course we want to protect the black woman. What about protect the black man? I don't see that. Why don't we protect our brothers out there? We not we not reaching out for that. So we ha so once again we have to have the same energy. Pre we need to protect black people in general. And it's not that black men don't want black women. I don't understand this notion. Uh, you know, I, I get it. But like I said, I'm trying to condense it. But once again, that's another issue within our culture that we as black people in America are going to have to really do soul searching and have a sit down and understand what is what defines a black man and a black woman. Because once again, I said it's a chaotic mix. You have some black women uh, thinking that a black man is someone that, you know, that's that's ghost. They want a ghost from power. They want a fictionalized character like that. And if he's not like that, he's a cornball or he's a loser. He's nobody. And then that's not all. I'm not saying all for for black people, women out there. I'm not saying that's all. But there's a lot of y'all with that mindset. And that's a problem. That's a big problem. When you compare what a black man is supposed to be to someone that you see on TV, that's not real. And even within that show, that character shows you he ain't shit. So, yes, there is, unfortunately, a gender war because there's a lot of wars on the black man for for being straight. For if Especially if he's heterosexual and he's not open, he's not going to go with certain things that he doesn't agree with. So if there's a black man out there who said, hey, I, 
I understand, you know, I have nothing against gays or transgenders, but I'm not, I don't agree with that mindset. Then he's transphobic or homophobic. That's not true. A black man is supposed to stand on his two feet as a man and withstand his values. Because why the hell would I want somebody who could be easily swindled mentally? If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Mm -hmm. So that's my thing about the protect the black woman theory. Okay, I don't want to hear shit until I hear y'all talk about Chad Wheeler. I really don't. And when it comes, like I said, to black women, black there are black men out there who, and black men need to hold each other accountable too for our actions because there are a lot of black men out there who are doing stupid shit. And we need to do that. And I've already said this, and I want to talk about this segment another time, but I'll shorten it again. I uh, think a lot of black men, we we need to be reminded what the word honor is, because unfortunately, a lot of young black men don't have that father figure or that OG or that somebody around to show them what honor is. So they don't. Mm. They, that's why they go out and behave a certain way. Like there's a story out now that this girl in Harlem was bitten her face because mm -hmm. she was the guy didn't she didn't accept his him buying her shit. Mm. And that's sad. That is unacceptable. That is yeah. outrageous. That dude needs to get his ass beat. Shit, his teeth need to be kicked out. But once again, I want to know. I, I want to have questions. I, I'm like, okay. For, first of all, he most likely didn't have the guidance, and I'm not. I'm not condoning it. He still need to get his ass beat. But I'm just saying, for guys like that who get that mad about certain shit like that, especially black men, it's like, who is around you that told you that that was okay to behave like that? Mm -hmm. See. Fortunately for me, I was around, I had a dad, I had OGs that, you know, and what I mean by OGs, it don't mean, it don't necessarily mean gangsters. It just means that person, that, 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 that man out there who, that masculine man who is complete with himself and knows how things, to do things the right way or the honorable way. You need that. We, we had those back in the day, especially when I was little, it was more probably so in the eighties and seventies, but you know, in the early 90s, you had that. I had some OGs come to me like, what the hell are you doing? And they pull you to the side and say, hey, this is not how you handle these things. Mm -hmm. This is not how you treat this woman. You treat her with respect. You want to make sure, because uh, uh, my dad would always get on me about that. He'd be like, would you want me to treat your mother or your sister the way that you see these dudes treating these girls? And I was like, no, I would not. So, yeah, it's. It's unfortunately, I think the thing is miscommunication. So black men need to tell black men how to be men. Black men don't need to necessarily tell black women how to be a woman mm -hmm. and vice versa. So both parties need to stay in their own lane. That's why certain things I say are for men or man shit. And that's woman shit. And nothing is wrong with that. There's a reason why God made man and woman and not man, woman or man. You know, he separated us because we have different things that we need to take care of. So that's okay. But yeah, there is a gender war, but we need, like I said, we need to have better communication, understanding, compassion. My biggest thing, you know, this is my number one word, accountability. Yeah, accountability is Fair essential. Word. No, but it is because all that, if you have accountability, it takes care of all that other shit. It really does. So like I said, for these black women out here that are mad about not feeling protected by the black man, look at what, look at how you present yourself. Look at how you carry yourself. Look at after what you go after. Why, you know, you want me to protect you, but you're putting that a good black man in harm's way because you want to fuck with a nigga that's crazy or stupid and you playing these games and then you want that good black man to come in and protect you, but he ends up losing his life or something in the process or his freedom fucking around with you. You know what I'm saying? This is why I say protect black men because there are a lot of black men I know personally they have lost their lives and their and some lost their freedom, some lost their reputation, good name over fucking with this woman. And mind you, the 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 crazy thing is she fucked with that same dude after all that ordeal's over. So that's what I'm saying about protect the black man. Not only that, protect our names, our images. Like I said, the Ray Rice thing. A lot of people, a lot of people forget that that woman married him after that incident where he punched her in the uh, elevator. You know, mm -hmm. and like I said, there are a lot of black men. Mental health is is nothing to take lightly, but that is something that I, I will not allow people to use as a crutch either, because, you know, right from wrong. That's your accountability. That's why I said with the Chad Wheeler people who were saying, oh, he has he was bipolar. So that's an excuse. Bullshit. If you know you're bipolar and you're not mentally incapacitated of not knowing to take your medicine, that's on you. If I know that I need to. 
put it this way. That's like me if 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 I didn't take a certain pill every day I would die. I you, I bet your I bet your ass I would be taking them pills every day to make sure that I don't die. Mm -hmm. So is accountability is one thing, and like I said, both sides have to atone to it. Uh, black men, you have to have the accountability of shit. Like man, you know, maybe I don't need to behave this way. Maybe I need to communicate more, which is once again something deeper. But then for the black women. You know, maybe you just got to uh, check w what's attractive to you and reevaluate your values as well. You know, you cannot, you can't get mad when you carry yourself a certain way. And that certain black man that you want, especially that black man, he's not for that. You know, it's a, it's how you present yourself on both sides, men and women. But I'm just talking about the women right now. Like I'm just saying, because you said it's a gender war because it is, unfortunately, there are a lot of things where, like I said, the black man is being pushed out of the box and, you know, they don't want him to, to, um, you know, like the toxic masculinity, I really find funny because there's a lot of things in there that's not toxic. Like there are certain things that need to be addressed. Like men don't need to keep hiding their emotions. We need to work on that to know it's okay mm -hmm. to express yourself. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to cry it out. If anything, I tell these young kids now, let that shit out so you don't pin that in there and have this rage and blow up or make someone else who doesn't deserve it pay for that other person's mistakes. Mm -hmm. So, yes, that definitely needs to be addressed. And we are going to work on that. We definitely will. But it's just so much other shit that needs to be explained as well. On the, from what I say from the women, it's just um, for black women... I'm just going to say, you know, not not all of you, but there are a lot of you out there. You need to let the man be the man of the relationship. Let him be the captain. Let him be the coach. You understand? Like, if if you need to make an audible play on in life, don't go for the same play just because you want to run it. And then you fuck around and get a turnover. And now you you mad at him for not. And he already said, I warned you about this. So let this man take control and it's not, what I mean by control, it doesn't mean run you. Just let him be the head of the household and handle his business as a man and do these things. You know, that is what I'm saying. You know, that man will honor and love you the right way, even if he had, when he's the head of the household. Let him do that. Mm -hmm. And if you make more money, that's fine too. That doesn't mean you got to treat him lower, but also for black men. If you know your woman makes more, you can't get upset about that. Do what you need to do. Handle your business. You both have this communication. So that can be worked out. Like I said, communication is, is key as well. But like I said, we just have to have accountability. And don't make excuses. Just because a, a certain black man don't want you, that doesn't... Because I, I take this... I say this a lot. Especially a lot. There are a lot of black women out there who don't... Uh, no, you know what? That's a, that's a woman thing. I'm not even going to do that. There are a lot of women out there who are mad that the type of man that they want don't choose them. And a lot of y'all don't qualify for what he wants. And that's okay. It's so easy for women to tell men how much we don't qualify for certain women. But if a man says, yeah, you're not, yeah, nah, I can do better. Then it's a problem. Then he's body shaming or then he's an asshole. He's a prick. No, take that same energy. You want to be, y'all want these equal rights. So you equally have a, you equally accept, susceptible to a man saying, uh, nah, no, thank you. Take that shit and walk away with it. We have to. We got to. Look, if a woman that I want today says, yeah, no, nah, I'm not feeling it. I have to accept it. That's OK. I'm not everybody's uh, cup of tea. Women out there, if you you're not going to be every man's cup of tea, accept that shit. You know, don't think, you know, like you might think you're a seven. But, you know, in reality, to the men, the type of man you want, you a four. But that's just the way it is. That doesn't mean you're a four to every man. That just means to those type of caliber men, you are. Just like if I want a Rihanna or, or like type of chick or the bad or, or Margot Robbie or something like that, my my dollars, my, my bank account might have to be, you know, substantially higher. I might have to be a six figure person, you know. You definitely would need to be. Well, yeah, more than likely. It's yeah, it's most yeah, most likely. The probability of it, yes. But I'm okay with that because 
that's all right. Mm -hmm. And you just got to know, you just got to know where you fall. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean I won't approach her. Because as I said, I'm still, just because I don't get intimidated by what you look like. First of all, I need to know how you act. Because there are a lot of beautiful women out there that as soon as they open their mouth, I go, ooh, you went from an eight to a four. Mm. So, yes. But back to your original statement, there there is a gender war. And unfortunately, that's going to have to get um, taken care of real soon. But I just, I'm just saying for right now, ladies, for black women, until I hear some more shit about Chad Wheeler and hear y'all getting this uproar, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear shit because this man beat this woman, almost killed her. I ain't hear no black feminists get on, on any social media, and I looked for days. Hell, it is Wednesday. That happened last Saturday. Uh, Yeah, damn near, yeah, on a Saturday. Not this past Saturday, the Saturday before. I ain't heard anything yet. So really, it's in a way, I'm disappointed in y'all. I'm disappointed. You know, like I said, we were talking about T.I. and Tiny now. We were jumping on that shit real quick. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> once again, Chad Wheeler is basically damn near got a pass from the so-called black feminist. You know, and or the, the black women that want to protect these sisters. So... And a, and a lot of that, is, and a lot of it can be bullshit too. It's a lot about certain black women protecting a black woman that they like. Because I guarantee you, if it's a black woman that they don't like, they won't give a shit about. They'll go, eh, she deserved it, whatever. But if it's someone that they rock with, they want to, then they'll use her as a platform of, yeah, she represents every black woman now. We got to take care of her. And that's not true all the time. That's not true. But like I said, protect. We need to protect black men too. We we you know we're under fire just as much, you know. Mm -hmm. We need to be protected, and it ain't just a physical thing. Like I said, we need our names need to be protected. We need to be tech, protected, you know, so we don't get bad mouthed and you know our reputations get destroyed. So it goes both ways. So that war is just it's, it's a mess. Mm. It, that's a mess too. Well, you uh you definitely said a handful right there. <laughs> I'm going to just um leave that, you know, I'm a, you know, <laughs> stay neutral when it comes to that. Um, to any black uh, men or women listening, y'all can give your opinions on how you feel about everything he just said as far as this gender war goes. Um, well, let's switch it to something more positive. Let me ask you, what what do you think? What is something black people are are doing right? What is something you can say, even with all the bullshit, we doing this right at least? Well, despite all the bullshit, we are still doing certain things right. Everything I just said, we're doing right because we're exceeding in sports. We're getting more black representation in movies. Every, like every negative thing that's going on in the black community, it, there's still a positive to it. We're just trying to get bring more of the positive out of the negative. So, yeah, okay. we're st there's still a lot of good things going on right now. I'm not saying that because... You could put it this way: you wouldn't have a black, you wouldn't have America without black progress. Like I said, we enrich everything going on right here, from styles to to slang to to movie sports, you name it. Black people have a stamp on it. So, like I said, there's certain things that we are exceed. There, are, you know, we're exceeding a lot. It's just we want to get the representation from it and. Just give us our props. And mm -hmm. what I mean props, I mean economic props. I mean social props, religious, historical props. So I, I'm going to need y'all to take these pictures down of Jesus looking at albino and show what he really would have looked like. And the what people of the history would look like in the past. I need y'all to tell, tell people that black people are, they have a lot more influence on things than what, what, what people know. You know, because unfortunately that gets lost in, in you know, in, in the context. Mm -hmm. So we need that. But yeah, for the most part, yeah, we, we still thrive. And one thing, black black Americans, we are still here. No matter what people thrown at us, we have overcome it. You know, everything. We're just here. We we know how, like I said, we know how to survive and we're going to keep going. The, the, the goal is that I want, I want black people to live life and not survive it. Mm -hmm. That is my big thing. I want us to live it. I want to, I don't know if it's going to be in my lifetime, but I will give my life to my future children that I have. I want them to live life. 
I want them to enjoy it. I'm, you know, I want I'm going to teach them survival, but for the most part, let's I know it's hard black Americans and black people, but let's try to start teaching our children just as much as we teach them how to survive, we want to teach them that there's life to live so we don't end up being so bitter because a lot of us out there are bitter and it's generational bitterness because it's like well, what difference does it make? It's going to be hard. I don't want that. I want you to go out there and try. There's a lot of things that I've gone through just over the past couple months where, you know, of course, race played a big part into it, but I didn't let that define me. I said, you know what? I'm going to keep trying because there are good people out there that aren't just black. You got good white people, Latin mm -hmm. people. There are so many good people out there. Just don't let the fuck shit people out there distract you from it. I know a lot of them are in power. You got a lot of fuck ass people in power, but don't stop. Don't let that stop you. Don't let that deter you from making a better future for you and your loved ones. So that's what I'm going to say, black people, in a nutshell. Let's li let's learn how to live life and not just survive it. We, are, we, we mastered that surviving shit as soon as we got, got here on Plymouth Rock. Mm. So let's let's try to let's try to live now. Let's try to enjoy it. You know, and I know it's hard, but we're gonna get there. And that, that that's my message to black people. Live, not just survive. Mm-hmm. That's good. Amen to that. And well, I was going to ask you how you think the black community can progress moving forward, but it seems like you kind of answered part of that in a way to mm -hmm. get out of just survival mode and learn to just live. Well, yeah, and unite. We need unification. Mm. Uh, we need unity economically, spiritually, politically, and it, that's what we need. That is the big things that we need right there. Unity is the most important thing. And what, unity doesn't mean everybody's going to be sitting behind each other kumbaya. No. Come to an understanding. Okay, this is how you feel. Okay, where can we meet in the middle? Like I said, black people right now are on a fucking bus driving 100 miles an hour. We need those people. We need those people from different um, mindsets to sit down on that bus and say, all right, guys, I hear you. But we got to find a direction because we're on a half tank now or mm -hmm. we're almost run, we're, we're running. We don't want to run on fumes. We're, we're half tanking now. We, we need to find where we need to know where we're going. Mm -hmm. We got a few exits coming up. Where are we going to go, black people? Where do we need to go? So they need to sit on that bus and have a conversation and we can tell the bus driver. All right, go this way. So, yes, come on, black people. Let's find our direction. Good. All right, AJ. Well, that was all the questions I have for tonight. Did you have anything else you wanted you wanted to say to the audience before we wrap it up? Uh, yeah. You can find me on um, Instagram a Turner underscore eight one three. You know me. Once again, please check out Ish Talk TV. Uh, you can go to Instagram, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and get that merchandise. www.utcdmv.com. I'll say it again www.utcdmv.com we have t-shirts we have we have hats we have mug cups we have ish brownies for 18 and up it's special brownies and then we have mm -hmm. uh special uh items uh clothing for women and we're gonna be uh you know modeling that soon that's so and then yeah that, that's it and then also once again please show some love to christina watch her show this was a really good one but once again, go back to the uh, can a woman handle a man's truth. I think you'll really get a kick out of that. <laughs> yeah, that was quite funny. That was quite entertaining. It was. It was excellent. Yeah. Do you guys sell a lot of those brownies? We do. We sell a nice. We sell. Uh, yeah, it's really good though. It's it's good. Uh, you can't mess with just, that. Just yes, you can. Just nibble on it uh, and you get to go. It, listen, it, I had one experience. Never again. Yes, I remember. Never you, again. That's just because you you didn't eat it. You can't eat the whole damn thing. Beginners, don't eat the whole <laughs> damn thing. You nibble, nibble uh, in any ed edibles. You nibble first, especially depending on the I milligrams. Didn't eat the whole thing. Though. Yeah, but you you don't do that that often anyway so i never there you go so yeah you got to make sure you know the milligram so you for you for starters just get maybe a five milligram don't try no 50 and up otherwise then you're playing yourself yes that's like if you're a drinker and you take five shots of straight five shots of whatever yeah you're gonna you're gonna have a bad trip you're supposed to take one and call it a day and okay. then build your tolerance
I'll just stick to alcohol. <laughs> That's what I you know. You can't even handle alcohol either. I know, but at least I can pace myself. Shit. Once I'm starting to feel the buzz, I can, you know, decide, okay, don't want to keep going, oh, yeah. you, don't you, slow down. I feel like with that stuff... You have to let it fly out, I, yeah. I, I, I can't, I yeah. can't. Yeah, that's I'm funny, not. you being high, you just gotta... No, nope. you just waiting. never you just, again. Yeah, she was just waiting to float down, Never y'all. again, <laughs> never. So, yes. It's not, not my thing, not my thing. <laughs> well, to everyone watching, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. Leave all your comments down below. For those of you that will be catching the replay, check out his Instagram pages, which I'll leave the links down to in the um, pinned comments under this video. And I'll check you all next time. All right, y'all. God bless. Take care.